Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Tim's Tuesday Story Time. I am uh, turning over a new leaf this week. I am going to attempt to set a good example. And by setting that good example, as you can see, I am sitting up straight in my chair. So uh, everybody out there, especially uh, the young children who um, maybe don't always sit up straight in their chairs, just remember, Mr. Tim sets a good example and sits up straight in his chair. Do you know why? Because my back was hurting. And they said, well, maybe you're not sitting up in your chair like you properly should, like your mom told you to all your life. And I said, you know what? You're right. So I am sitting up properly in my chair. So if you're watching and you're sitting in a chair, everybody, make sure you're sitting up properly and keeping your back straight. That's our today's special medical public service for uh, Mr. Tim's Tuesday story time. Now, <clears throat> for the good times, who wants to hear a joke, huh? Huh? What do you call a buccaneer, that's a pirate, with a cat on his shoulder? A purret. Get it? Like a pirate? Um, why did the cat put the letter M into the freezer? He wanted to turn ice into mice. Now, <clears throat> two cats had a fishbowl, and they had a couple of clownfish swimming around in there, and they couldn't stand just those swimming around clownfish, so they grabbed them out and started eating them, and they're eating those clownfish, and one of the other cats says to the other cat, Does this taste funny to you? Let's see, who do we have here? We have Lacey and we have Bland. Welcome, Lacey and Bland. So good to see you here. Don't forget, everybody, if you're joining us on Storytime, please feel free to share with your friends all over the world. Uh, please, please feel free to give us a shout out there. I've got my good friend, Charlestown Library himself, the, the human personification of Charlestown Library himself, is going to be uh, responding to those. I really appreciate all the work that he does. So, are you all ready for some cat stories? All right, I got cat stories. Now, remember, any books that we read here on Storytime, any that I do or that Miss Debbie does or she does hers, all those books are available. We get them right from the Charlestown Library. And since we're offering at least pickup service for now, you can uh, reserve those books online or give us a call if you see a title you like and let us know that you want them, and we'll make sure to get those checked out for you, and you can come and pick them up. Oh, yay, my good friend Brian is here too. So you got to say hi to Brian, everybody. Brian, Brian is the man who keeps everything running smoothly. If not, we, we, we wouldn't have the story times. So this first one is really original name of a cat story. It's called Cats, Cats, Cats. This one is by Leslie Newman, and it's illustrated by Erica Oler. And as you can see, that lady has a lot of cats. She's got cats all over. Looks like the illustrations were done with, with watercolors. It's kind of neat. And it rhymes, so uh, keep up. <clears throat> In a great big house on the edge of town lived a tiny old woman named Mrs. Brown. She had no children. She had no mother. She had no sister. She had no brother. She had no chickens. She had no rats. What Mrs. Brown had were cats, cats, cats. Cats in the sunlight enjoying a snooze while Mrs. Brown watched the 8 o'clock news. Cats on the counter, each deep in a dream, while Mrs. Brown drank her coffee with her cream. Cats sleeping on sofas, cats sleeping on chairs, while Mrs. Brown swept and vacuumed the stairs. Cats snoring in harmony all in a bunch, while Mrs. Brown ate an omelet for lunch. Cats dozing outside, each one on a pillow, while Mrs. Brown trimmed the old weeping willow. Black cats, white cats, gray cats, too, eyes of brown and eyes of blue, eyes of gold and eyes of green, tall cats, short cats, fat and lean, striped cats, spotted cats, large and small. Mrs. Brown loved them all. Look at all those cats, my goodness. She loved the softness of their fur. She loved the loudness of their purr. She loved to comb their fluffy tails. She loved to manicure their nails. She loved to sit and chat with them. She loved to wear a hat with them. She loved to fill her lap with them. 
She loved to take a nap with them. She loved to place them all just so and then embrace them row by row. When nighttime came, old Mrs. Brown put 60 bowls of cat food down. Then pet each one upon the head and marched herself straight up to bed. As soon as she began to snore, the fun with the cats galore. Cats in the entryway throwing confetti. Cats in the dining room eating spaghetti. Cats in the studio working with clay. Cats in the parlor performing a play. Cats in the drawing room purling and knitting. Cats in the sewing room having a fitting. Cats in the closet in jackets and hats. Cats in the courtyard with baseballs and bats. Cats in the library writing and reading. Cats in the kitchen stirring and kneading. While Mrs. Brown was tucked in at night, the cats would party every night. They'd chase their tails, they'd cut a rug, they'd foxtrot, and they'd jitterbug. They'd feast on seven-layer cakes and drink 100 chocolate shakes. They'd whoop it up until the dawn. Those cats would really carry on. The sun came up, the cats went down, and out of bed crept Mrs. Brown. She clasped her hands to her chest and cried, My cats are just the best. Then piled them all into a heap so they could get their beauty sleep. Some say that Mrs. Brown is batty and that her house is way too catty. Says Mrs. Brown, Oh, fiddle-dee-dee, I love my cats and... They love me. What a cute little story, huh? Those cats really made a mess in that house, but it looks like they cleaned up just enough that Mrs. Brown didn't even notice what a big party they had. Did you like that one? Ready for more? <clears throat> well, before we have more uh, uh, stories, we've got to tell you, um, when is it bad luck to see a black cat? When you're a mouse. Uh -huh. What kind of kitten works at the hospital? Why, the first, gra first aid kit, of course. All right, who else do we have here? Uh, we got other folks joining us and, and saying hello. Like I said, please feel free to give us a shout out. Give us a like, give us a share. We always appreciate it. Also a reminder, if you like the stories that we read on here, we uh, make sure that... Uh, uh, to check us out on our new service. You can catch this online. You don't even have to come into the library. You can do it at 2 o'clock in the morning in your pajamas if you want. It's called Hoopla. And there are a lot of titles out there. It's a digital way to read books. There's lots of children's books and children's uh, comics as well on Hoopla. So parents, check Hoopla out. And uh, it's a good way if you want to find stories to read to your kids. You can. All you need is a good, valid library card. And just go to our website uh, and uh, look up the instructions. It's real easy. It's just an app that you can download to your computer or your device and you can read books uh, for free from the library. This next one is really neat. Um, Yan Suk Choi is a Korean author and she wrote a book called New Cat. New Cat lived in a tofu factory in the Bronx in New York City. At four o'clock Every morning, Mr. Kim, the owner of the factory, arrived at his office to start the day. Good morning, he would call as he stepped through the front door. Meow, New Cat would answer. They were the best of friends. Mr. Kim had found New Cat at an animal shelter when he'd first come to America from Korea. He needed a, a friend as much as she had. She was smaller than a tofu block back then. When he brought her to work, people said, Oh, you got a new cat! Yes, new cat, Mr. Kim explained with, exclaimed with pride. And that is how new cat got her name. New cat watched Mr. Kim work hard to make the best tofu in all of New York City. New cat worked hard, too. It was her job to hold down the paper while Mr. Kim was writing clean the computer monitor with her tail, and taste the tofu Mr. Kim, for Mr. Kim when he put it in her bowl. But her most important job 
was to keep mice out of the factory. New Cat loved everything about living in the tofu factory, except for one thing. She had seen a mouse in the production room, and Mr. Kim didn't allow New Cat to go in there. How could New Cat do her job properly if she couldn't get out to chase the mouse? And there you see New Cat, and New Cat sees that mouse right down there. But Mr. Kim wouldn't let her out to get it. One quiet night, Miss New Cat was awakened by a scratching sound. She opened her eyes, and there was the mouse right in front of her nose. New Cat waited for just the right moment, then sprang, but the mouse was too fast. It escaped under the door into the production room. New Cat scratched at the production room door and found it wasn't tightly closed. She wasn't supposed to go in there, but she always knew that the mouse was up to no good. She didn't know what to do. With her ears pricked backward and her tail twitching, New Cat slipped through the door into the production room. She spotted the mouse right away, standing on top of a water boiler. It was chewing the electrical wires. Meow! New Cat pounced, but the mouse was too fast and got away. Then New Cat saw something strange. A bright orange light waved in the corner. It grew bigger and bigger and then lunged toward New Cat. It was hot! Uh oh, what do you think that is? Smoke filled the air. There was a terrible noise of screaming sirens. New Cat tried to go back to Mr. Kim's office, but the hot orange light blocked her path. She ran the other way and leaped into a cart loaded with a bucket full of tofu. Firefighters broke through the factory door and aimed their hoses at the fire. By the time Mr. Kim arrived, the fire was almost out. I must thank you for saving my factory, he said to the firefighters. Actually, the fire couldn't get past that big pile of tofu on the floor, said one of the firefighters. That's what kept the fire from spreading before we got here. You are lucky it was there. Oh, said Mr. Kim. That makes sense. Tofu is mostly water. But he wondered how the tofu had spilled. While the firefighters got ready to leave, Mr. Kim headed for his office to check on New Cat. But the office door stood open and New Cat was not there. New Cat! New Cat! he called. He waited for the familiar meow, but New Cat didn't answer. She's been my best friend for seven years, ever since I came to America, Mr. Kim said sadly. A firefighter put his hand on Mr. Kim's shoulder. Don't worry, he said. Your cat probably just got scared and ran away. She'll turn up when she knows the danger is past. Go on home and get some sleep. But Mr. Kim knew he wouldn't be able to sleep. He was too worried about New Cat. After the firemen had left, Mr. Kim decided to clean up the spilled tofu. Suddenly a bucket of tofu began to shake. Meow, it said, and out of the bucket climbed a very wet cat. Mr. Kim was delighted. Oh, New Cat, he said, I was so worried about you. Meow, New Cat answered as if nothing had happened. The next day, Mr. Kim fixed the door so mice could never get into the production air room again. New Cat was very happy to go back to her office life where she could watch to make sure that Mr. Kim was still making the very best tofu in all of New York City. I like that story. That's a nice little story. Kind of makes me hungry. You know, tofu is, if you've ever had tofu, it's a really great uh, substitute for a lot of foods. And it, basically, you can make it taste like almost anything. And it's healthy. It's good for you, too, as well. All right. Uh, how does a cat get what it wants with lots of persuasion? All right, you guys ready for another one? <clears throat> All right, I got another one for you. This one, this one is called The Cats of Tiffany Street. This one is by Sarah Hayes, The Cats of Tiffany Street. Neat picture, huh? What do you think that cat's up to? Mm -hmm, that cat's walking down the street looking around the block.
<sighs> On Friday night, they arranged to meet down at the end of Tiffany Street. They climbed out the windows, squeezed through doors, and one came through from the seventh floor. There was Marmalade Ned, with his special fish head, Captain Bly, who had only one eye, Delicate Fan from Isfahan, Pitter and Pat, the family cats, and Shadow the Stray, who wandered all day, searching and searching for somewhere to stay. Around and around to a silent beat, they danced at the end of Tiffany Street. Then along came the man with the van. He snatched up Ned and Delicate Fan and plushed them into the back of the van. He snatched up Pitter, he snatched up Pat and Captain Bly, the one-eyed cat. Shadow the stray who wandered all day, quietly, quietly slipped away and hid from the man with the van. But when the van left Tiffany Street, Shadow was hiding under the seat. The man in the van drove all night, on and on until it got light, when he reached an empty turkey shed. And there he left poor Marmalade Ned, and Delicate Fan, and Pitter and Pat, and Captain Bly, the one-eyed cat. Shadow the Stray, who wandered all day, quietly, quietly slipped away, and hid from the man with the van. But when he lay on his rollaway bed, Shadow sang out from the roof of the shed, Never again will the cats all meet to dance at the end of Tiffany Street. And all night long, and all night long, she sang that song, and all night long he heard that song, and tossed and turned on his rollaway bed, and thought with regret of the cats in the shed. And when he couldn't take it any more, the man threw open that turkey shed door, delicate fan just ran and ran, but Captain Bly attacked the man. Pitter and Pat hissed and spat, and Marmalade Ned sat on his head. Then the cats all ran away, except for Shadow, the wandering stray, who saw that the man wasn't really bad, just old and lonely and terribly sad. Four months later, with very sore feet, the cats returned to Tiffany Street. Marmalade Ned got a new fish head. Delicate fan ate chicken and ham. Pitter and Pat did this and that. And Captain Bly had pickled pie. And when they met on Tiffany Street and danced and danced to the silent beat, the cats all thought of that awful day and wondered what happened to Shadow the Stray. Shadow was far from Tiffany Street, in a place she had found with plenty to eat, and a home, and a lap, and a rollaway bed, with the man in the van, and the turkey shed. Oh, look, the man in the van looks happy now that he's got a pet cat. So it was kind of scary at first when that man came into town and took all those cats with him, but it turned out he just wanted some pets. He was lonely, but he didn't do it the right way. Yeah. But it looks like Shadow, who never had a home, uh, became a good friend with, with, uh, with the man. So that was, that was a good, good happy ending to that one. All right. Who else do we have? We have new people join us. We have Pat here. Hello, Pat. We have Cookie. Hi, Cookie. We have Bruce. Bruce, hello again. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this wonderful morning. Um, cookie, you know, there is a, a book called uh, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, and uh, I, I enjoy that whole series of books. They're very clever. They're cleverly written. So it just so happens that I have another one called Give, If You Give a Cat a Cupcake. Man, a cupcake sure sounds good right now. We've talked about to tofu is the healthy part. You eat the tofu, that's like the, the, the supper part. And for dessert, I want a cupcake. So, uh, uh, the, if you give a cat a cupcake, these stories, of course, are by Laura Numeroff and Felicia Bond uh, 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 does the illustrations on them. 
If you give a cat a cupcake, he'll ask for some sprinkles to go with it. When you give him the sprinkles, he might spill some on the floor. Cleaning up will make him hot, so you'll give him a bathing suit and take him to the beach. He'll want to go in the water and build a sandcastle too, and he'll look for seashells. He'll find a few other things as well. He'll put them in his pail and try to pick it up, but it'll be too heavy. He'll decide he needs to work out at the gym. First, he'll warm up on the treadmill. Then he'll lift a weight or two. He might even try a karate class. Look at that, he's a black belt already. After the gym, he'll want to go to the park where you'll get there. He'll sit on the rocks. He'll climb as high as he can go. At the top, he'll see the lake. He'll want you to take him rowing. He'll be the captain, and you'll have to row. Then he'll notice the merry-go-round and want to go for a ride. He'll want you to go for a ride, too. You'll choose the horse with the purple mane, and he'll get it on the whale. The whale will remind him of the science museum. He'll ask, him to, he'll ask you to take him there. First, he'll find the... Dinosaurs! Then, he'll visit the Hall of Apes. When the museum closes, you'll be the last to leave. On the way home, you'll pass by the beach, and you'll help him gather all of his things. Then, he'll want to race you. When you get home, he'll empty the sand from his shoes. He might spill some on the floor. Seeing the sand on the floor will remind him of the sprinkles. He'll probably ask you for some, and chances are, if you give him some sprinkles, he'll want a cupcake to go with them. I love those stories. They all come back to the, to the very first thing they got. So that's what will happen if you give a cat a cupcake. Let's see. If you give a Tim a tofu. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We should write that one. See, see how that one goes. Why did the cat pour oil all over the mouth? Because it squeaked. All right. Oh, man. You guys want one more? Ready for one more? All right. All right. Beautiful day out there, isn't it? Beautiful day. It's a good time to hear some stories and uh, and then go out and play in the sunshine. It's going to be going to be another gorgeous day here in Charlestown. Um, just a reminder, too, the uh, uh, summer reading time is here. Summer reading program is here. And we've got some great little uh, treats to give away to all of our uh, 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 kids out there who are participating. Also doing it for teens this year as well. Teens are welcome to register. So if you have older brothers, older sisters, or if you have um, teenagers living in the house or know of any, say, hey, um, I, know, I know you just love to read books during the summertime. Um, so please feel free to register for that. But you know, you don't have to read a lot. Um, you know, even if you just read 15, 20 minutes a day, uh, and, uh, you know, for older kids too, you know, if you're reading magazines, if you're reading comic books, anything like that, that counts. Even listening to audio books, that counts. Or listening to stories, that counts as it. Especially for those who don't know how to read yet, obviously, listening counts as reading. So uh, we want to encourage that. Visit our website and sign up for the summer reading program. We've got a lot of... Uh, of people signed up already, but uh, always got room for as many more. All the city can sign up. Every, every child in Charlestown can sign up for the summer reading program, children and teens. All right, so this next one is called Castaway Cats. It's by Lisa Wheeler, art by Ponder Gimble.
passed away cat. So where do you think this one's gonna take place? On the ocean. Swimming. Look at him swimming. Castaway cats on an island in the ocean near the land of Singapore, midst a storm of great proportion, fifteen cats were washed ashore. Water dripped from their wilted whiskers, sea salt stung exotic eyes. Fifteen felines felt quite fearful, each had used up several lives. There were seven scrawny kittens, and a Persian blue named Flo, a tough tom known as Mittens, was a short-haired calico. One tabby, looking shabby, and a bobtail known as Link, helped a sorry, soaking wet angora, who was sure her fur would shrink. The tawny twins, with toothy grins, were native of Siam. A marmalade stood up and said, I think we're in a jam. We need shelter, said the tabby as he led them to a cave. Then the kitten started bawling until Mitten said, Behave! Fifteen cats by tempest blown, seven babes and eight full grown. In the morning, as the sun rose, Fifteen cats rub sleepy eyes. The grown-ups search for breakfast to appease the kitten's cries. They drank milk from the coconuts. The ocean teemed with fish. A broken shell served each cat well and made a humble dish. So you can see them out there fishing, gathering coconuts and everything. This is perfect, said Angora as she licked her lovely lips. Don't get cozy, said the tabby. It's time we looked for ships. The twins climbed up the rocky cliff. Each kitten took a tree. Thirty eyes scanned the horizon for a savior from the sea. And although they kept their vigil, and although they raised a flag, and although they kept a watch fire, fifteen hopes began to sag. Fifteen cats meow with woe, nine above and six below. No more waiting, said the tabby, and he firmly set his jowl. You're not the boss, said Mittens, and Angora said, Meow. Don't get catty, warned the Persian as she whipped her plush blue tail. We have to work together. We must build a boat and sail. Good idea, responded Mittens. We are not here on vacation. The marmalade stood up and said, What a sticky situation. They scoured the shore for flotsam and for driftwood that would float. They gathered vines for lashings, and they tried to build a boat. Tie it this way, said the tabby. Do it our way, said the twins. Hurry, hurry, mewed the kittens as they raced to see who'd win. Fifteen cats work by the sea. Fifteen cats cannot agree. Then Bobtail pumped the Persian, and the twins just up and quit. And Gora chipped a painted claw and threw a hissy fit. No time for spats and spouting, said the short-head calico. We need more wood and palm leaves. Move your tails now. Go, go, go! But the cats would not get moving, nor would they even try. And they wouldn't work together, so the fur began to fly. <clears throat> Fifteen cats lie on the shore. Ten are bruised and five are sore. In the evening, as the moon rose... Fifteen cats rubbed achy jaws. They hung their backs and, and their heads in silence, and they kicked their swollen paws. We are foolish, said the Persian as she wrapped her tattered tail. We have to work together, for divided we will fail. So they sat around the fire, and they organized a plan. Then early the next morning, after breakfast, they began. Let me help you, said the tabby. You are so thoughtful, said the twins. Look what we found, mewed the kittens, as they toted empty tins. 
Each feline helped another. Each feline did his share. Each feline worked till sunset. Now the boat was nearly there. Fifteen cats slept at a heap. Two awake, thirteen asleep. It's so lovely, said the Persian as she gazed out at the sea. The island feels like home now, all like all you cats, like family. When we get back to the mainland, will each feline go his own way? I hope not, mumbled Mittens. All my life I've been astray. I would miss these little mewlers. Then he tucked the kittens in as he struggled with a lonely sigh and stroked each tiny chin. The tabby sobbed agreement as he rubbed a sleepy eye, and Gora woke, the bobtail choked, and the twins, they began to cry. One by one, the kittens each arose and added, please, can we stay? Is there a way? We never want to leave. We're staying, Mitten shouted, joined by cheers of happy mews. The marmalade woke up and said, I'll spread the lovely news. Fifteen cats, by tempest blown, fifteen cats have made a home. So those cats got stranded on that deserted island, and they just decided, hey, we just want to stay here and, and enjoy the time that we all have together. So uh, that was a cute little fun story. Do you guys want to, I think I've got one more. You want one more? I think I've, I've got one more book. I think the reason uh, I wasn't sure was because it's kind of like the very first story we had where it's just about off somebody with a whole lot of cats. But cats can be funny. So you ready for another cat story? I think my dogs are ready for a cat story. No, they're not talking to me now because they're mad that I'm doing stories about cats. You got to hear stories about dogs a couple weeks ago, so just, just be quiet, dog. All right, <clears throat> one more to go. Let's see, we have Virginie. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, we have Paul. Hello, Paul. Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> one more story. One more cat tale. <laughs> Mrs. McTats and her house full of cats by Alicid Satin Cappuccilli. Mrs. McTats and her house full of cats. In a small, cozy cottage lived Mrs. McTats. She lived all alone except for one cat. You can see there's the little village and there's Mrs. McTat's little house. Every morning she left as the clock struck eight. To market, to market, I mustn't be late. She browsed to the market and chose a plump fish. For Abner and me, what a sumptuous dish. But when she got home, there came a scratch on the door. And in walked two cats. Was there room for more? Come in, my sweet dears, said Mrs. McTats. I'm sure I've got room for just two more cats. I'll call you Basil, and Curly, you'll be. I only had one cat, but now I have three. The very next morning, Mrs. McTats woke early. She stopped to pet Abner and Basil and Curly. To market, to market, I mustn't be late. This chicken, I think, will surely taste great. But when she got home, there came a scratch on the door, and in walked three cats. Was there room for more? Come in, my sweet dears, said Mrs. McTats. I think I've got room for just three more cats. Now give me a moment. What shall your names be? Your Dolly, your Ernest, and Fuzzy makes three. The very next morning, off went Mrs. McTats. What can I buy for six hungry cats? I've got it, she said. I'll make a nice stew. So she carried home beef and liver to brew. But back at home, there came a scratch on the door, and in walked four cats. Was there room for four more? Come in, my sweet dears, said Mrs. McTats. 
I know there's a place for just four more cats. Ten's a fine number. Ten cats and me. I'll call you Goldie, and Herman you'll be. Izzy and Jezebel prance across the floor, and then right behind them followed five more. Coco and Linus, Millie, Noreen, and you shall be Oscar. There, that makes 15. The very next day, off went Mrs. McTatt's. What can I possibly feed? 15 cats. She chose a fresh tuna. She chose a fine trout. But when she got home, her cats were all out. Oh, look how sad she looks. All her cats are gone. She counted her cats from 1 to 15, but somehow six more cats had just joined the scene. Come, come, my sweet dear, said Mrs. McTats. I'm sure I have plenty for 21 cats. Pip, Quip and Rosebud, and Sally, and Tozy, Ursula, dear, do make yourself cozy. Twenty-one cats. But then came another scratch on the door. Could it be more cats? How many more? In came Violet, in came Winnie, and just behind, a kitten named Zinny. In came Yodel, the last of the bunch. Twenty-five cats ready for lunch. But something was missing. What could it be? Just what it was, Mrs. McTats could not see. As she stood there puzzling, there was a scratch on the door, and Mrs. McTats wondered, Could there really be more? Could she squeeze in more cats? More than twenty-five? Who was the one? Who was next to arrive? Come in, my sweet dear, said Mrs. McTats. I live in this cottage with twenty-five cats. But if you don't mind, you're welcome to stay, you're welcome to eat, you're welcome to play. Now in that small cottage lives Mrs. McTats, all happy and cozy with her 25 cats and one little puppy whose name known as Zoom in a small cozy cottage with plenty of room. And just when the clock strikes each morning at eight, Mrs. McTat hurries off. I mustn't be late. To market, to market, what treats will they there be for 26 sweet deers from A to Z? Ah, did you see what happened there? It was an alphabet story. All of her pets are named after a single letter in the alphabet, A through Z. I like little Zoom the best because I like little puppies, but the cats looked pretty cute too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you all so very much for joining us this morning, kids. Um, eat your vegetables, play outside, have a good time in the sunshine. It's a beautiful day out there. Um, don't forget, summer reading program is going on. Check out our website. We'll see you here next Tuesday at 1030, just like always. Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock, my good friend Miss Debbie is going to be doing her story time as well. So come and visit her then. In the meantime, enjoy your week, and I will see you next Tuesday.